Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to talk about hardware, software, other facilities and support services that can be provided to lecturers or subject matter experts developing MOOCs in an institutional context. Okay, the main issues that we're going to look at in this video are the selection and provision of tools, where where we're going to provide these, where the recordings, where the content development is going to take place and the services that are going to be provided to the subject matter experts. Okay, hardware. Now we've looked at hardware before in terms of what hardware is useful in producing content, particularly video content, standard hardware that you could work with a personal laptop or PC. But in an institutional context, we may be able to afford some other types of hardware that may be more expensive and can be justified because they might be shared. For instance, rather than use a standard webcam, if we have a studio available, a self-service studio, might we have a studio quality camera on a tripod, possibly automated using classroom automation type systems that allow it to follow the presenter so you don't need a camera person. Uh, can you provide a second screen, which is always very useful when working because you can keep stuff off screen and drag it on, but could that screen be a tablet screen where the subject matter expert can write on their slides as they present and make it a more natural form of presentation? Perhaps you have more space and you could have an electronic whiteboard, just like people are using in classrooms, which lecturers like to write on because it replicates the natural way they present to their own students or maybe just a simple graphics tablet that a lecturer can use in their office or at home. Another type uh, of tool that lecturers like for drawing is and for writing is a visualizer which really is a camera that's projected downwards onto a piece of paper and they can just write on that paper. Perhaps if you're working in a studio situation you might use a backdrop or maybe a green screen so an electronic backdrop can be uh, provided later. Software. Now it must be remembered that the objective here is to make the recording of videos as simple as possible for subject matter experts. They do not want to develop a whole lot of new skills. Okay so you might use personal recording software. Screen capture software that really just sits in the background of a, a computer and when they turn it on it can capture what's going on in the screen their audio and their webcam and combine them either into a, a video or some sort of a temporary format that can be post-processed into a video later often these tools can be built into powerpoint so it captures the powerpoint presentation and the video and audio now, whether that output is in a finished video or whether it's in an intermediate form, it may be worthwhile doing some editing on it. Uh, so there may be editing tools that can be provided, possibly not to a lecturer, because remember, this is probably not a skill that a lecturer or subject matter expert would want to develop. I would just like to say a few words on institutional tools uh, for recording, specifically lecture capture systems. Now these are systems that are designed to be installed in classrooms that make it extremely easy for lecturers to use. They can just bring up whatever they want to on the screen, plug in their microphone and press record. And at the end of a class, it will post process and publish that recording to where students can view it. Now those systems are not only useful in recording classes, they can be used as very easy tools for making short recordings from offices or from studios or wherever. So they can be used for short recordings as well. Worth considering. So where are we going to locate uh, the services? Now I'm going to look at these different locations against these four ideas. What are the implications for maintenance, support, redundancies, and costs? Now, the first one I'm going to look at is the office. Okay, maintenance can be a problem here. Uh, 
because they tend to be distributed all over the organization, all over the buildings, and it can be quite difficult for IT support staff to get to them to maintain. Same with support. When a lecturer is working, maybe recording, it can be difficult to get support because there's nobody necessarily nearby. Redundancy is a problem because if something goes wrong with the machine, they may not have replacements. Uh, costs may be an issue because you've got to uh, fully equip or equip as well as possible all the staff that are working on MOOCs. What about in a classroom? Well, a classroom can be shared with many uh, MOOC developers, so costs can be kept pretty low, but you have the problems with maintenance, mostly because uh, so many people have access to it, including students, that equipment tends to be interfered with, cables pulled out, changes made to settings, and it can be difficult with maintenance. It can be very unpredictable whether the equipment will work. Support can be a problem because classrooms can be very widely spread around an institution, and it can be difficult to be near support when you need it. Redundancy can see could be a problem because you might only equip some classrooms and it may not be easy to find an alternative. What about at home? Lectures recording videos at home. Well, they tend to keep their equipment in good condition. It tends to maybe only be one user. So maintenance isn't too much of a problem, but if something does arrive, it can be difficult to fix because I, your IT support doesn't have responsibility for lecturers' homes. Support can be a problem because they're far away. Redundancy can be a problem uh, and costs can be a problem. What about a set of booths, small rooms that, that uh, you can record? in? Let's just go back to booths. What about a set of small rooms all well equipped near each other and near the IT support services, often called booths or kiosks? This can be very good for maintenance because they're only used for this purpose. People are not interfering with the equipment for other reasons. It can be near IT services and they can do preventive maintenance as well as be available for immediate maintenance. Uh, they can provide very high level of support nearby because you have many of these booths. Uh, you can have redundancy. If one breaks down, there's another one available. And because they're shared between many staff members, your unit costs can be reduced. Unfortunately, they're only really used for recording, so they may be left unused for a lot of the time. Self-service studio is a similar idea, except possibly a bigger version of the booths. In other words, a small recording studio, but you might only be able to afford to have one. Maintenance would be good because it would be near IT services. Support would be very good. Wouldn't be redund good on redundancy. Uh, could be good on cost because it's shared between many people. Okay, let's talk about support services. Now, normally we'd like to provide support services from early morning to late at night because you never know when our staff would, would not going to be able to afford to provide it 24 seven, as it were. Also, because MOOCs may well be a small part of what we do, it's unlikely that we'd be able to integrate it or we'd be able to provide separate MOOC support, it'll need to be integrated into normal IT support or e-learning support. Now, I, an efficient way of providing support is that when questions come in to create little videos or little helpful documents and to make them available in a system that's easy to find so people can help themselves in the future by using these videos. They must be organized well so it's easy to find the video they want. So if there's nobody on hand to help them, they can use these videos. The next level of support might be asynchronous. In other words, you submit a request for support, but you won't get it straight away. You might get it within 24 hours, often called it ticketing systems, and they may use canned responses. In other words, if a request comes in that's been answered before, they may send out a standard response. That standard response may even link to one of the how-to videos or how-to documents. Now, it's quite a challenge uh, creating a MOOC, so uh, staff may need to get immediate or may like to get immediate support. So we might need to locate the support systems near the shared facilities, or even better, locate the shared facilities near where there is good support, okay? 
another method if people are going to work from their offices or from home or from elsewhere is to have a hotline. That hotline might be in the form of phone, but invariably the support person will want to see the lecturer's computer, their screen, or will want to show them. So video conferencing might be a better way to do it. This particular image here shows Google Hangouts being used uh, for, for support. Uh, in other words, somebody is about to share one of their windows that's open on their computer and show the IT support person what's wrong with it. Okay, that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for your attention. Uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the videos. Thank you. Bye.